I stepped forward and took the snake with both hands. Carl released it to me. I turned to face the congregation and lifted the rattlesnake up toward the light. It was moving like it wanted to get even higher, to climb out of that church and into the air. And it was exactly as the handlers had told me. I felt no fear. The snake seemed to be an extension of myself. And suddenly there seemed to be nothing in the room but me and the snake. Everything else had disappeared. Carl, the congregation, my friend Jim, all gone, all faded to white and I could not hear the ear-splitting music. The air was silent and still and filled with that strong, even light. And I realized that I too was fading into the white. I was losing myself by degrees, like the incredible shrinking man. The snake would be the last to go. And all I could see was the way its scales shimmered one last time in the light and the way its head moved from side to side searching for a way out. I knew then why the handlers took up serpents. There's power in the act of disappearing. There is victory in the loss of self. It must be close to our conception of paradise, what it's like before you're born or after you die. I came back in stages, first with the recognition that the shouting I had begun to hear was coming from my own mouth. Then I realized I was holding a rattlesnake. <laughs> and the church rushed back with all its clamor, heat, and smell. I remembered Carl and turned toward where I thought he might be. I lowered the snake to waist level. It was an enormous animal, heavy and firm. The scales on its side were as rough as calluses. I could feel its muscles rippling beneath the skin. I was aware it was not a part of me now and that I couldn't predict what it might do. I extended it toward Carl. He took it from me, stepped to the side, and gave it in turn to J.L. Jesus, J.L. said. Oh, Jesus. His knees bent. His head went back. I knew it was happening to him, too. 